Here the interviewer should introduce themselves by name and personalise the interview. To help reduce the anxiety that a witness might feel, the interviewer can then pose neutral questions that can be answered positively and are not associated with the witnessed event. Ideally here the interviewer should use open-ended questions to encourage the witness to give elaborate responses because that is what you need the interviewee to do later in the interview. Rapport is very important when the information that will be discussed is very personal. So the interviewer should show empathy through active listening. Nonverbal behaviour is also important at this stage and also throughout the whole interview to establish an enhanced rapport. In the second phase of the enhanced cognitive interview, the interviewer creates a context in which the interview will occur. Now bearing in mind that what the witness is about to be asked to do requires intense concentration, the interviewer really needs to create an environment that is peaceful and where the witness does not feel rushed to give an answer. Here, the interviewer also needs to explicitly transfer control of the interview to the witness. Many witnesses will come into the interview and expect the interviewer to control it. This expectation has to be corrected and the interviewer needs to make clear that they are there only to facilitate recall. It is the witness's interview, not the interviewer's. At this point, the interviewer should encourage the witness to report everything that they've seen. So in this phase three, the interviewer initiates a free report but using the context reinstatement instruction I described before. After the witness has successfully recreated the context, the interviewer should prompt an uninterrupted free report of the witnessed event. In phase four, the interviewer asks questions based on the free report given by the witness. The interviewer should structure the questioning in the order that the witness remembered. This helps to ensure that the questioning is compatible with the witness's recall. Here again, the report everything instruction should be repeated and it should be emphasised that it's okay for the witness to say they don't know an answer to a question or if they don't understand the question being asked. The mini context reinstatement is used to help the witness to create a mental image of the more specific details of the event. Again, open questions are used to initiate further free recall of a particular segment of the account before further probing or using a closed question. The interviewer should also avoid topic hopping, which is jumping from one topic to another. Each topic should be exhausted before moving to the next. In phase five, varied retrieval strategies, such as reverse order recall and the change perspective instruction can be used. Before they are used though, it should be explained to the witness why these methods are being used, as a witness might not be particularly happy being asked multiple times to recall the same thing. Depending on the type of event, the use of each of the five different senses can also be used as further retrieval prompts. For example, in an arson case, smell might be highly important, and so you would ask the witness to try and recall what they were smelling at the time. In actual practice, when a witness to a crime is being interviewed, at phase six, the enhanced cognitive interview will often revert to a more recognisable standard police interview. At this point, Information that is important to the investigation but has not been mentioned by the witness may be introduced in order to get the witness's reflection on it. While this is important to the investigation, the introduction of this information may actually lead the witness, which is not desirable. And the information that results after this point may ultimately be of less evidential value. Phase 7 comprises the interviewer's summary of the witness's word to check their own recall for accuracy. Phase 8 is closure which means the interviewer gradually returns to neutral topics to conclude the interview on a positive note. The interviewer should provide information on what will happen after the interview and answer any questions that the witness has. Finally, phase nine is the evaluation of the interview with the interviewer's colleagues, which should take place to allow for continued professional development of the police. So, as you can see, in reality, if followed properly, the enhanced cognitive interview is rather a lengthy and complex technique. However, as Griffiths and Milne in 2010 noted, the evidence from lab-based research is convincing in terms of demonstrating the effectiveness of the techniques and has led to the term the cognitive interview superiority effect. In the first empirical investigation of the efficacy of this enhanced cognitive interview, Fisher and colleagues in 1987 compared the original cognitive interview to the enhanced cognitive interview. In this study, undergraduates were interviewed two days after watching the Los Angeles Police Department training films that I described earlier, 
and they were interviewed by officers using either the original cognitive interview or the enhanced cognitive interview. The original cognitive interview used the four memory retrieval components that were described to participants at the beginning of their interview. So mental reinstatement of context, report everything, change temporal order and change perspective. The enhanced cognitive interview, in addition to the four original components, moved through the phases I just described, using witness compatible questioning and focused retrieval techniques. The results of this evaluation show that the enhanced cognitive interview elicited 45% more correct items of information compared with the original cognitive interview. And there were no differences between the two interview techniques in the amount of incorrect information recalled. Since then, the enhanced cognitive interview superiority effect has been replicated in many countries such as the USA, England, Australia, Brazil and Portugal, and with many different witnesses, so with children, with adults and with the elderly. The enhanced cognitive interview superiority effect has been seen with different delays between the witness event and the interview, ranging from minutes to months and with different events such as a crime, a traffic accident or a phone call. The effect has also been seen both in lab and field studies. As a result, the enhanced cognitive interview has been widely trained and used by police forces in many countries such as England, Wales and Australia. However, a number of field evaluations have shown that in practice police officers either do not use or only use certain parts of the enhanced cognitive interview. For example, Kebbell and colleagues in a paper published in 1999 surveyed 96 experienced officers trained in the cognitive interview and found that these officers agreed that certain elements of the cognitive interview were seen as more useful than others and were thought to be used more frequently. The useful techniques were establish rapport, report everything, encourage concentration, witness compatible questioning and mental reinstatement of context. Other elements such as using different temporal orders for recall and the change perspective were less positively evaluated. And Paolo and colleagues in 2017 noted three key criticisms of them. First, the procedures take considerable interviewing time and time is typically scarce in police investigations. Second, as Bensey and colleagues in 2011 noted, the procedures typically elicit very limited additional information. And finally, police officers simply see the procedures to be ineffective, time-consuming and difficult to use. Because of this, replacing or removing the change order and change perspective techniques from the enhanced cognitive interview has been discussed. One suggestion has been to ask witnesses for a second retrieval attempt with something called category clustering recall. Here, witnesses are asked to recall one more time everything they can remember about a crime episode, but this time they're asked to organise their recall and speech into broad information categories that are present in almost every crime. So things like person details, object details, location details, action details, conversation details and sound details, rather than the temporal clusters used within the change order instruction. Paolo and colleagues in 2016 suggest that this technique might be easier for witnesses as people often naturally or spontaneously encode, organise and recall information in semantic categories and doing so may trigger other memories as recalling information in one cluster may trigger other memories that are closely related to that cluster. In addition, as this technique only requires the interviewer to be able to explain a simple instruction to the witness, it requires less effort, interference, adjustment and training from the interviewer. Paolo and colleagues in 2016 investigating replacing the change order mnemonic with category clustering recall. In this study they randomly allocated 66 Portuguese students to one of three conditions. The first was a standard enhanced cognitive interview condition. The second condition used a revised enhanced cognitive interview with category clustering recall instead of the change order technique. And the third condition was a revised enhanced cognitive interview with category clustering recall instead of the change order technique, but with eye closure and additional open-ended follow-up questions. All participants first watched a 3 minute 11 second clip from a 2004 Portuguese television drama called Inspector Max. This recording showed a man armed, walking inside a bank and taking several hostages in order to carry out the robbery. In the clip, the robber verbally and physically interacts with the hostages, with a cashier and with a police officer who later approaches the robber. 48 hours later, the participants undertook a cognitive interview in line with their allocated condition. Now, all interview protocols included at least three of the four enhanced cognitive interview cognitive mnemonics. Report everything, 
context reestatement and change order, as well as the social and communicative components described by Fisher and Geiselman in 1992, such as rapport building, transfer of control, appropriate questioning, so if you like, witness compatible questioning and mental imagery. So, as in the standard enhanced cognitive interviewer, the interviewers first engage in the greet and rapport procedures before asking participants to recall what they can remember about the video in any order and in the pace they desired. They were reminded to report everything with as much detail as possible. Here, mental reinstatement or context was also used. In the next phase of the study, participants engaged in a second attempt at recall. Those in the enhanced cognitive interview were asked to recall the video in the reverse order. In both conditions with the revised enhanced cognitive interview, participants were instead asked to recall with the aid of category clustering recall. This recall strategy consists of asking participants to recall everything one more time, but organising their recall and speech into information categories. So they were asked to first recall everything they could remember about the objects of the crime scene. Then participants were asked to recall everything they could remember about the location of each person at the crime scene. Following that, participants were asked to focus on and recall the actions that occurred during the crime. Lastly, participants were asked to focus on what they might have heard during the video, and first recall everything they could remember about what people said during the crime, and then everything they could remember about other sounds that they might have heard. In the revised cognitive interview, uh, with eye closure and additional open-ended follow-up questions, participants were asked to close their eyes while performing this task, and participants were asked additional open-ended follow-up questions once they'd finished their recall. Now, in the final phase of the interview, all participants in all conditions were asked to focus one more time on the video and try and report any new details that they could remember. The analysis of the interview show a significant effect of condition on a number of correct units of information recalled but no effective condition on the number of errors or confabulations, those made-up elements, made during the interview. Follow-up tests of the significant effect showed that participants in the enhanced cognitive interview condition recalled fewer correct details than participants in either of the two revised enhanced cognitive interview conditions. The recall of correct details did not differ between the two revised enhanced cognitive interview conditions. And this was the same when looking at just the recall and the phases that differ between the two conditions rather than total recall. Finally, accuracy of recall during the final, that is the third attempt at recall, did not differ significantly between the conditions, suggesting that the use of the revised enhanced cognitive interview with cluster, category clustering recall did not impact the number of new correct units of information that the participants were able to recall. The results of this study provide some early suggestion that the use of category clustering recall could be a superior alternative to those parts of the enhanced cognitive interview that are not liked or used by police officers in the field. However, more research using category clustering recall is needed before it can be seen as a viable alternative to the traditional methods used in the enhanced cognitive interview.